Hi guys, Gianna Spawn, letting your light shine. All right, so we're gonna get back to these audio recordings. Um, this is, <laughs> I, I just, I, I, I'm i not laughing, I keep saying that. It's it's not even funny, but it, it's, it's just so ridiculous, the amount of crap that I listen to and put up with. Instead of just saying, this guy's a nutcase and walk out the freaking door. But no, I was bantering back with him. So this is, um, this is audio recording of where I questioned him on why he lost his job, which I just told you guys about that um, he didn't lose it because of 2008. He actually got fired because he treated people like shit, but he's defending it. And notice I questioned him on being defensive. All right. So um, let me play this real quick. All right, here we go. Do that. And what happened? You lost your Six. self worth no, in 2008. No, I did not. I never lost my self worth because I knew I could get a job no matter where I was. Then where are you working today? Oh my fucking god. Twelve years later. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. I went to Boston twice to work. I went to Las Vegas. I had all these jobs sitting out here, and then I went to work with my buddy Greg. Well, this lady fucked me on a fucking check that she fucking fraudulently did to someone else after the fact. And that cost me a $250,000 job at Bank of America and a fucking mutual company. So you want to know what? But you were Other charged. You were charged with a criminal It was a felony, act. babe. It was a white crime felony. I know. That I didn't do. I don't know. I wasn't there. So. Okay. So... He just sat there and said that he didn't get this job at Bank of America that he was offered because he stole from somebody. He stole a $50 check. And this is all public record. All public record. Maricopa County Superior Court. All criminal records are public record. Um, stole a check from a lady for $50 because he was probably destitute at the time. But he sits here and he, 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 he convinced me or tried to convince me. But you know what? In the back of my mind, I knew in my gut he was lying. He said that she reported him as stealing the check. But the bank has video of him cashing a $50 check. Okay? So he was so desperate to have money at the time. Because why? He didn't have a job, you guys. I keep saying that. Okay? Desperate people do desperate things. And especially with a narcissistic mind, they don't have the mindset to think clearly and do rational stuff. So the entire time that I was with him in the beginning, I even did his set aside. I, I did a set aside for him, and which, which was granted, um, but it doesn't mean that he wasn't guilty. He took a plea deal. Usually people that take a plea deal will... I'm per, well, I, I shouldn't voice my opinion on that. I don't want to get ridiculed. But uh, my personal opinion is if I don't do something wrong, I'm taking it all the way. Because I'm not going to have anybody tell me that I did something that I didn't do. But he was so defensive on this particular issue that he swore up and down that he did not take this check. That she, the, the lady that he, that, that reported him taking this check was crazy and you know, she'd done this before and blah, 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 blah. Again, remember what I said about what he does to me. He got into my head thinking I was crazy. So over $50, this man was declined a job making $250,000 a year. Whether that was a salary, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, again, it's, you know, with these people, it's just, they embellish so much and they elaborate on the actual facts. So Hmm, half of it's true, half of it's not. Um, but I, I, that always sat wrong with me in my gut because I was like, what the frick is this guy doing? Like, who would ever take a check from anybody, right? I, I wouldn't, never. But he says that it just kind of happened to be in his name and it just happened to be cashed at his bank for a booster club uh, uh, um, fundraiser thing or whatever. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It just never did. So he got super defensive every time I talked about it, every freaking time I talked about it. And again, I, I've said this before to me, in my personal opinion, defensiveness is a sign of guiltiness. If you don't do anything wrong, then why in the world would you get defensive about it? 
somebody questioned me on something, I'd be like, no, I never did that. Like, that's weird. That's crazy. But with him, it was like this automatic, like, explosion, which that's, that's, something's up there. Okay. Just going to tell you. So I was very aware of that. But again, this is one of the things that I kind of put in the back of my head thinking, oh, maybe he's right. Looking back, no, I was naive on that issue in believing him because that was not factual. All right. So I, I looked up all the court records. I, I, I do my research. I do. And, uh, that's what I do. Okay. We research. I'm a writer. So figure shit out. <laughs> um, but be aware of what your narcissist, and I don't mean to say your narcissist because I don't want you to own them. Okay. Because we should not have any part of that. It should be completely distant. But when they start getting really defensive or, or denying something that you know, in your gut, go with your gut. Go with your gut always, okay? Because our gut never lies. We will try to dismiss it. We will try to come up with a mind game that says, mm, no, that's not true because they say it's not true. Our guts never lie. It's our intuition. We have to go with it. So I just really had a hard time with that. Um, and again, it was like, well, you know, it's Maricopa County and, you know, it's the hardest and he blamed it on having some prosecutor that was very young and wanting a notch under his belt and all that. Well, you know, maybe the prosecutor saw something that was actual facts and he could take it to trial and ruin this guy. And he's like, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go to trial because, you know, I could have ended up with two years of jail time. I would have been like, well, you know, me, if I didn't do anything wrong, I'm going to take my chances. Okay. I know what is right. I know what is wrong. I will never take a plea deal for something that I did not do wrong. There's no way in hell. All right. Some people may not agree with my opinion and that is totally okay, depending on the circumstances. But he just, he just, he got so overly exaggerated and it just felt lies were coming out of his mouth and it just wouldn't stop. And it was like, he was over explaining the whole case and he was over exaggerating on every little minute issue. And I was like, oh my gosh, why are you talking so incessantly about every single detail about this. Like, I don't need to hear every detail, but it was like, he was trying to prove his point. And I get that to a point, but it, it just was weird. It was just so weird. And, uh, um, and then he was trying to blame this woman saying that she had done this before and she had done this to many other people. And, um, that's not true. I, it's not true at all. So the people that were involved in this, I have spoken to after the fact, and I truly believe with 100% certainty that this man stole from this, this elderly lady. Absolutely. Um, I got the backstory from the people involved and we've since talked and it was, it was pretty eye opening. And, uh, there goes my earring and I, I might as well just take the other one out. Cause why do you need earrings? Right. And I, I kind of, I kind of ridiculed myself a little bit. I was like, Janice, you knew this, but you ignored it. You ignored it, but I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not, I won't do it, but I still knew in my gut. And that's what I'm trying to say. When you have gut feelings for something, don't ignore those gut feelings. They're always going to be right. They're going to steer you in the right direction. They're going to guide you. Um, I knew he was lying. I knew he was. And I got confirmation that he was, he totally lied. He stole that money. He did. He did. He totally did. And if he did it to her, he probably did it to other people. Um, he stole from me. And this incident happened in, I think 2012, which is right after his divorce, which was when he was desperate for money. Because remember 2008 lost the job. Couldn't get a job after that. Uh, doing side jobs. That was one of the jobs that where he went into clean carpets or uh, uh, what's the, um, something about, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the company where you, you get damaged to your home from water or whatever. Um, anyway, so he, he totally manipulated this poor old lady. And I, the reason I believe that it's true is because like I said, he stole from me years later. And he probably stole from other people. And 
the Facebook message that I got from a gal, which I think was in one of my earlier episodes, 15 through 20, where she private messaged me and said that he stole from her. She was on an unemployment and he still stole from her. So a thief is always a thief, always. Um, be careful with these guys. Be careful with these gals. Um, narcissists are real and they're, they're, they're master manipulators and they will convince you that they need money or they need this or they need that. Man, don't, don't be so trustworthy with people. I try to trust everybody that I come in contact with, but I've had to learn that lesson too, that I just cannot, I cannot do that anymore because I don't know who's real and who's not. You have to prove yourself to me. And the only people that I trust in my life today are the people that have proven themselves that they are um, trustworthy and reliable and will have my back. And that involves my family and it involves my best friend, Nick. It involves several of my very close girlfriends and some other family members. And I'm super okay with my circle being super small. You don't need a lot of friends out there. Start with a small group and then as they gain your trust and prove themselves, not with words, but with actions, okay? They back up their words with actions. Those are your people. So my circle is small and I, I, I just couldn't be more grateful. So be very careful who you are trusting because there are thieves everywhere. There are narcissists everywhere and it's becoming so much more prominent than it used to be. Go off your gut, trust it, and don't, don't give your heart to everybody that is nice to you. It's hard, especially for empaths because we love to love, um, but be careful, okay? Because we gotta have that guard up. And I hate that we live in a world like this today. It, it bothers me and I don't like the, using the word hate because that's such a strong word, but I, I despise it with all my might that we live in a world where we can't just be loving and kind people to everybody and just have this relationship with our neighbors and our friends and coworkers and everybody's just happy. You know, I guess I should move to an island where it's just full of happiness because that's been my dream. So might make that my dream come true. <laughs> Maldives, here I come. <laughs> anyway, all right. I'll play uh, the next recording shortly. Okay, guys. Thank you, guys. Love and light to all of you. You guys are a blessing to me. Thank you.